For the employees of SpaceX, one thing is certain. If there is a planet in our galactic neighborhood that might host the first human settlement, then it can only be Mars. Although no human has yet set foot on the shimmering reddish surface of our neighboring planet, Mars has been considered the most promising candidate for several decades when it comes to the question of cosmic relocation. However, in view of the fact that there are two other rocky planets in our solar system besides Mars and Earth, the question arises, wouldn't it possibly be wiser to colonize another planet? In particular, Venus, which in the past was often referred to as Earth's twin sister, is regularly the focus of scientific interest in this regard. Together with you, we would like to take a closer look at this celestial body and present both the advantages and disadvantages of colonizing Venus. Do you want to learn more about the exciting discoveries and incomparable processes in the universe on a regular basis? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space and click on the bell to stay up to date from now on. By giving us a thumbs up, you'll be showing us that we can keep you excitingly informed with the content of our posts. The Earth Twin one thing is certain, if Venus were really as researchers in the past assumed, there would be no more suitable candidate for the settlement of a strange celestial body. Before our sister planet was explored with the help of modern space probes, people could only speculate about what was hiding beneath the planet's dense band of clouds. Until the early 1960s, therefore, the assumption was that Venus could be an exceedingly life-friendly planet. Experts assumed that the surface of the planet resembled a humid and warm jungle world, home to the most diverse living things. Today, we know that such an idea could not be further from reality. We've found that Venus's atmosphere is composed mainly of carbon dioxide, with the thermometer at ground level never dropping below a value of a scorching hot 824 degrees Fahrenheit. The cloud cover, which is always closed, in turn consists of 75% sulfuric acid droplets, large ones of which regularly rain down toward the lower atmospheric layers. In view of this natural starting position, one could therefore think that the establishment of a Venus colony would be doomed to failure from the outset. Nevertheless, our sister planet has some advantages over Mars in this respect. First of all, it is closer to our blue home planet. The minimum distance between our earthly home and Venus is just 24 million miles. The shortest distance between Mars and Earth is 33 million miles. The time needed to reach Venus would be significantly shorter than a space flight to Mars. This could mean in the reverse conclusion that the so-called twin sister of the Earth for a settlement appears clearly more economical than Mars. But also for the participating astronauts, the shorter distance would have a not insignificant advantage. During the journey to Venus, the astronauts would be exposed to the harmful effects of space radiation for a much shorter time. Further Advantages Everyday life, or more precisely the generation of energy, could also be made more effective on Venus. As the second innermost planet in the solar system, the mean distance between the planet and its host star is 62 million miles. Between Mars and our parent star in turn, there is a mean distance of just under 120 million miles. Conversely, solar collectors installed on Venus could generate significantly more electricity than their hypothetical counterparts on the red planet. Although the atmosphere of our sister planet appears extremely toxic at first glance, it's significantly denser than the sparse gas envelope that surrounds Mars. This also means that Venus's atmosphere could protect humans far better from meteorite impacts and incoming radiation from space. The immense carbon dioxide buildup that characterizes Venus's atmosphere could possibly even be used one day to extract oxygen. Another advantage Venus has over Mars is its gravitational pull. At 0.9 times the value of our terrestrial home, this is almost similar to Earth. In the case of the red planet, however, gravity is only 0.4 times as great as on Earth. And in fact, this significant reduction in gravity is accompanied by high health risks. To prevent drastic muscle and bone loss on Mars, the space settlers would have to undergo rigorous strength training every day. The Downside in view of the many advantages the colonization of Venus apparently promises, the question arises, why such an enterprise is not discussed in the rows of the experts 
just as intensively as the future settlement of Mars. Well, this is not least because of the numerous disadvantages accompanying such a mission. In fact, the carbon dioxide trapped in Venus's atmosphere is fueling what is known as a galloping greenhouse effect. This means that the appropriate process strengthens by itself and inexorably. Thus, the intense greenhouse effect eventually also led to the complete evaporation over time of all the liquid water accumulations that once graced the planet's surface. At the same time, this process raises the surface temperature on Venus to an average of 869 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to cause lead to melt. The enormous pressure that prevails on the planet is also the result of the extreme greenhouse effect. The most advanced military submarines of our time are capable of withstanding 75 times the surface pressure on Earth. On Venus, however, the armored submarines would burst after about two hours. Here, the pressure conditions exceed those on Earth by a factor of 90. In fact, some of the early unmanned probe missions also fell victim to the immense pressure conditions on Venus. And even the more modern reinforced equipment of today can only stand a few hours on the planet's surface before being crushed by the natural conditions. Devastating Storms But even if humanity were able to find a way to defy the extreme surface pressures, they would face other severe complications of everyday life. These include the violent storms that regularly sweep across the outer surface of the celestial body at insane speeds. Winds on Venus, for example, can reach speeds of up to 220 miles per hour, equivalent to 60 times the rotational speed of the actual planet. By comparison, Typhoon Tip, the strongest and largest tropical cyclone ever observed on Earth, reached a top speed of 180 miles per hour. While such violent phenomena are the exception on our blue home planet, they are practically the order of the day on Venus. The day-night cycle on our sister planet also tends to extremes compared to what we are used to on Earth. Because of the planet's slow rotation, about 116 days and 18 hours pass before Venus has rotated once on its own axis. Transferred to the scenario of a Venus colony, this would therefore mean that the settlers would be confronted with both endless hours of sunlight and never-ending night phases. Compared to the rapid storms, the extreme pressure, and the scorching hot average temperatures, this point does not weigh quite as heavily, but it could still be associated with negative consequences on the everyday life of colonists. Possible Solutions Despite all these natural occurrences on Venus, would it be possible to find a way for humans to survive permanently on our sister planet? When it comes to the question of colonizing the planet's surface, the answer from some experts is a decided no. On the other hand, a home high above the surface of Venus seems somewhat less hopeless. At an altitude of about 30 miles, pressure, radiation, and gravity conditions are very similar to those on Earth. If you're picturing the cloud city of Bespin from Star Wars, you're on the right track. In fact, NASA has already commissioned a team of engineers to develop such a cloud city concept of an alien celestial body. Apart from this exciting idea, however, there is also the question of whether it is theoretically possible to lower the temperatures and pressure on Venus to such an extent that they become bearable for humans. With regard to cooling, there are not too many concepts that are ready to talk about. The most promising approach is the construction of one or more gigantic mirrors. These solar reflectors would have to be placed around the planet to direct the incoming solar radiation back into space. As additional components, special cooling systems could be installed below the surface to accelerate the reduction of surface temperatures. And what about bringing down the extreme pressure? The somewhat strange answer is a mass bombardment with hydrogen bombs. This theory, which seems very strange at first, is based on the following train of thought. If the detonating bombs react with the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, graphite and water are released. After a gigantic bombardment, these reaction substances would cover more than three quarters of the planet's surface. In this way, it would be possible to reduce the Venus pressure to three times that of the Earth. In reality, however, such an undertaking proves impossible due to the enormous consumption of resources, the considerable logistical problems, and the lack of technologies required for this. Now it's time for your opinion. What do you think about the hypothetical colonization of Venus? We're already curious about your comments. Finally, have a look at the other videos on our channel, which we have linked for you in the credits. Thanks for your interest. Take care, and we'll see you next time.